Right, so question 11 on, on that sample paper from the department was the algebra question. Part A, find the value of 2p minus 1 over root p squared plus 7 when p is equal to minus 7. Okay, so this is a substitution question where they've told you the value of this variable in your question and you sub it in. So it becomes, now when 2p is written like that, that means 2 multiplied by p. So the easiest way to write it down for yourselves is with brackets. That is maths language for multiplied, okay? It's the same thing as to write that. It's just you get confused with X's and letters and stuff, okay? So brackets is the easiest way to do it. Keep everything else the same. So it's 2p minus 1 over the square root of p squared again. So put the minus 7 squared into the bracket plus 15. Okay, I put it into the calculators all in one go. So hit that fraction button and then I'm doing 2 bracket minus 7 minus 1. Hit down to the under the square roots or under the fraction line. Hit the square root button bracket minus 7 squared plus 15. And I am getting minus 15 over 8 for that particular one. Okay, so I hope that one's okay. Um, factorize fully. Let me move him in a bit because I'm going to need more room for that factorizing. Okay, so factorize fully fh, 5fh minus 2h squared minus 6h plus 15f. Okay, so there's four types of factorization if you remember. There is grouping which is this one. It's got four terms in it. That's how I know it's grouping. There's quadratics, which look like ax squared plus bx plus c. There's the difference of two squares, which is two perfect square numbers uh, subtracted. Okay, so it's the difference. So this is going to be a minus, and these are going to be perfect squares numbers. So it's the difference of two squares. And then the last one, the fourth one, is taking out the highest common factor. But this is a grouping. It's got four terms. And just like the name says, I group them into pairs of terms. And why do I have to group them? Well, when I look across at that, there's nothing common in each of the terms. So in other words, I see H is common here. There's a H here. There's a H here. But look at that, no H here. OK, there's no number common. I see 2 divides in here and here. 2 doesn't divide into 5 or 15. F isn't common. It's here and here, but it's not in the middle ones. And it doesn't matter what letter or number you, you use. Nothing is common all the way across. OK, and that's why we have to group them then into pairs that have something common. OK, does it matter what pairs you take? No, it doesn't. OK, so I'm going to do it a couple of ways just to show you what happens when people take different pairs. So at the start, I'm going to just pair that one with that one and that one with that one. OK, and then after that, I'm going to pair the 5FH with the 15F and then the two in the middle together. OK, so if you've done it a different way from me, uh, as I'm going to do it now, hold your horses before you change anything. Let me do it both ways and let me show you how it doesn't matter. OK, so what's common here between 5FH and minus 2H squared? Well, the number certainly isn't common because 2 and 5, nothing divides in evenly into them. But I do have a letter common, H and H squared. OK, so basically the factors of 5F and H are 5 by F by h and the factors of here is 2 by h by h. So I see a h common in both of them. So I take him outside. And what's left over? Well, there's a 5f here. I still have my minus. My minus is coming from here. And what's left here? The 2 and the other h. OK. Um, I'm going to keep my minus in the middle here. Right, we have 6H and 15F, okay? So 6 
has got factors. It's got three by two. I'm going to use the dot as, as, as my multiplied. Three by two by H is the factors of six H. 15, I could have 15 by one. I could have five by three and all of them, I have that F, okay? So what's common there? Well, not the letter, because there's F in one and H in the other. So it looks like the three is common. There's the three, there's the three, okay? So let's take that three outside. What's left over? Well, it's the two and the H up here, plus uh, five and F here. Oh, and I can't have a plus here. And I'll tell you why I can't have a plus because I have a plus up here and minus by plus does not give me a plus, okay? So I have to change that one to a minus. Now I've got minus by minus to give me a plus because you also have to match the signs. Okay, I'm now looking inside the brackets to see are they the same? So I have 5F minus 2H here. I have a 5F, I have the 2H, but the signs are the opposite. So see that 5F, that's a plus 5F. Here I have a minus 5F. Here I have a minus 2H. Here I have a plus 2H. So both my signs are the wrong way. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means that this sign here in the middle was wrong. Okay, so I don't go mad scribbling out. I just write under it. I change that sign there. And what happens is if you change that sign, you have to change all the signs all the way across. So he becomes, oh, I forgot my three. Let me put him in. He becomes a minus 2H and he becomes a plus 5F. So let's check our signs up here to see are we right. Okay, so I have plus 3 by minus 2. So plus by minus does give me a minus plus by plus gives me a plus. Okay, so watch the signs. So that's the one that's correct. I now see a plus 5F and a plus 5F here, minus 2H, minus 2H, okay? So I put a little X there beside it, just to tell whoever's correct in your junior cycle paper um, that um, you know that's wrong, okay? So, the last step in, in factorizing is that the outer terms become their own bracket. And then you write down the inner brackets just once. Okay, and it doesn't matter which version, they are the same thing. I suppose that one just looks normal, that doesn't have the minus first. So that there is the factors of this. Okay, in other words, if I multiply this back out together, I will in fact get what's up here. Okay, or like I said, we could have taken our factors in different ways. So we had 5FH, so you only have to do it one way. So if you have it this way, you're good. But let me, let me take different pairs of factors in case somebody saw different factors. So in this one, uh, I was going to take this one and 15, wasn't it? And then I was going to group these two together, okay? So I'm just going to rewrite out the sum with my pairs of factors beside each other. Okay, so I've done no solving, no nothing. I've literally just rewritten out the sum with whatever I'm going to group together beside each other so that I can see them, okay? So... Again, let's think about factors. So the factors of him are five by F by H. Five is a prime number and one, of course, but one is everything. Him, 15 by three by F. No, that was wrong. 15 by one by F. Or five by three by F. Okay. And I suppose I should put in the one there as well. So what's common? Let's have a look across. Um, well, the five is common here and the F. Okay, so let's take the two of them outside. So five and F, because always what you have to take outside is what's called the highest common factor. So it's what's the highest things or the most things that's common between the two terms. So what's left over here? Well, I have the five F already here, so it's the H. 
what's left here, it's the three. Okay, now when you get good at factorizing, you don't need to write out what I've written in red. That's why I've written it in red. You can do it in your head. Okay, um, it's just if you're a little bit weaker at it for now, you might need to write it out just to see. So the factors of two is one by two and h squared is h by h. The factors of six h is one uh, by six by h or two by three by h. So again, let's look across and see what's common. Well, I definitely have a h, it's in all of them. Okay, but I have a two here, so I need to take this one here because it has another common factor. Okay, and I'm going to again take the minus with me this time. So minus two h, let's open the bracket. What's left over? Well, just a h or one h if you want, but we generally don't put in the one. What's left over here? The three. Okay, let's think about our signs. I have a minus there. I've chosen to put a minus there. So minus by plus does indeed give me this minus. Let's have a look at the brackets, h plus three, h plus three. I'm happy with that. The brackets match. So the two on the outside go into their own bracket. And then the center ones, that's a bit far away. The center ones go into their other bracket. OK, and you can see I've got the same answer, of course, I have as down here because it's the same sum. So what happened differently? Well, have a look here. When you take a different pair of a different grouping, what was on, on the outside here, so the H plus 3, ended up being on the inside when I took the other pair. And what was on the outside here was actually what was on the inside here. So that really is all that happens when you take different pairings, okay? So take whichever ones you see uh, that you think, you know what, that's the easiest one to take. But think about the highest common factor because if you don't take out the highest common factor, again, these brackets wouldn't match. Okay, so that's the factorizing. And then the last part of that question was an algebraic fraction. Write the following as a single fraction. And just like with any other fraction, that means a common denominator. Okay, so remember what that means. If I'm going to add those together, my common denominator in this case is six. So where did I get that? Well, I multiplied the bottom together. That's what that means. Two threes are six. Okay. And then I do six by a half plus six by two thirds. I multiply the common denominator by each bit in turn. Okay, and then I start cancelling. And I end up multiplying the top then together. So three times one plus two times two over that six. And then I tidy it up. OK, so that's the steps that you know and love. Everybody loves fractions and I'm sarcastic there. Um, they are the steps to fractions and the steps to algebraic fractions are no different. My common denominator are the two pieces multiplied by each other. OK, and then on the top, I take my common denominator like this and I multiply it by each piece in turn. Okay, put in your minus, and then, you know what, I didn't give myself enough room, did I? Let's see if I can move it down a bit. No, doesn't wanna move. Move him up instead, that loop. Okay, so two times two x plus one times four times the other piece of the fraction, just extend the line. So my common denominator is the two bottoms multiplied by each other. And then you multiply your common denominator by the first piece, keep the sign, multiply your common denominator by the second piece. And then you can see what cancels. So the bottom will always cancel with one of the pieces and the bottom here would cancel with the other piece. And then write down what's left for yourself. 
So four times five minus two X plus one times X all over two X plus one times four. Okay, and then let's multiply. So four fives are 20 minus, so two X by X, two X squared, back to that minus in a minute, plus one by x, plus x. Okay, let's multiply the bottom. Four by two x is eight x, four by ones is four. Okay, why did I put the brackets in here and pause in the video? Well, it's because of this, I suppose troublesome minus in the middle. You have to be really careful with that because it's minus all of this, okay? so which means that that will become a minus by plus to give me a minus, okay? So once I work through that minus, it's a minus X as well, okay? Like such, okay? Because it's minus two X by X to give me minus two X squared and it's minus one by X to give me minus one X, okay? So you can do it all in one go and go from here down to here but sometimes it's easier just to put in a set of brackets after the minus and then deal with it afterwards. So what I say is ripple through that minus, minus by the two X squared is minus two X squared, minus by the plus X is minus X. And that looks like it's written as a single fraction and we have it all multiplied out. You could factorize it and stuff to simplify it. Um, but I didn't ask for that, so I'm presuming that's an acceptable way to um, to present it.